Welcome to the Old Capital Real Estate Investing Podcast with Michael Becker and Paul Peebles. During this program, you will hear interviews with real-life successful investors who will share their stories and provide useful advice on how to acquire, finance, and operate apartment complexes. Now, here they are, Mike Becker and Paul Peebles. Welcome to the Old Capital Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Peebles, National Underwriter with Old Capital. And joining me today is two Old Capital guys, and one is Mike Becker. Hey, Paul. The other one is James Eng. Thanks, Paul. So in the podcast today, we've had a lot of questions about small balance lending through the Freddie Mac program. It's a program that's been around for probably about 18 months to two years or so. It's had a lot of success. And we brought in a specialist. John Darrow is joining us. John Darrow is going to be in the podcast right now. And we're going to talk a little bit about what it takes to qualify, talk a little bit about why the program came around, what's the benefits of it, what's good about it, what's bad about it, what's the difference between having a Freddie Mac loan and a Fannie Mae loan. So we're going to jump right into the podcast. I'm going to jump, throw the mic over to Mike. So, John, maybe just kind of start from the, the top, kind of high-level overview. What What is a Freddie Mac Small Balance Program, and why did it come around, and about how long has it been around? Sure. Thanks a lot, guys, for having me on today. The Freddie Mac Small Balance Program was originated about two years ago, and it was really conceived of and targeting. It came out to target small balance opportunities in the $1 to $5 million space with uh, projects with five units or more. Backing up at a, at a very high level, Freddie realizes that the majority of multifamily deals in the United States fall below the $5 million threshold. And if you're looking for agency financing, typically in the past, it was either too time intensive or cost prohibitive to do a, a larger Freddie loan or even Fannie or, or whatnot. So typically, these loan opportunities have been ending up going to banks. And if Freddie's mandate is to promote affordability, having these loans end up in the hands of banks has been somewhat challenging. challenging. That would be a good way, <laughs> good way to say it. So the program came about and just running you through it, it's a great little product. It was conceived to compete with banks, so you're going to see a lot of bank features in the program. First being it's, it's non-recourse with standard bad boy carve-out provisions. It has the ability to go up to 80% loan to value on both acquisitions and refinances, it's a nationwide program, so there's no market that we can't lend in. And Freddie has gone through and delineated each market so that I know exactly how much I can provide in terms of loan-to-value, what my minimum debt service coverage ratio is, and what my pricing will be in each of those markets throughout so, the country. So that's a little bit of a different thing, is that versus a bank versus Freddie Mac, is that Freddie will do a non-recourse loan. Most banks are, are not going to do a non-recourse loan. They'll probably do full recourse We'll not do 80%. We'll only do maybe 65 or 70, possibly even 75 max LTV. So now you can go higher leverage. And then remember, uh, you know, Freddie Mac is only for multifamily. So it's not for office, retail, you know, anything that's a different food type. It is just for the multifamily space. That's correct, Paul. And actually, one of the exciting things about the program is that I can do mixed use properties, which is nice if you're in an urban environment. Meaning having apartments on the top and, say, retail down below, correct? That's correct. That's correct. As long as the commercial component is 50% or less of my gross income, I can finance that with a Freddie Mac small balance loan. So if I'm a multifamily borrower, what characteristics of a principal or a sponsor and deal are you guys looking for to put into the Freddie Mac small balance program? Maybe kind of describe who's the best fit for this type of product. I guess a great answer to that would be everyone is a good fit. The way that we look at borrowers is on a very holistic level. So you can't just take the borrower and separate him out from the rest of the deal. Each deal is is unique in its own way. That being said, there are definitely red flags to borrowers out there that we like to make sure that we consider beforehand, before getting the deal term sheeted, and also before we get into underwriting. Some of those red flags would be a credit score below, a FICO score below 650, a bankruptcy in the past a non-U.S. citizen. Um, Do you guys let first-timers on your deals? Sure. First-timers are, are great borrowers on our product. With that being said, it's not a categorical no when I run into one of these red flags. I, I do have deals that I've done in the past where the borrower has, has a bankruptcy. I have deals where I can provide financing for a non-U.S. citizen. 
I have deals where I can do a, um, a borrower that has a FICO score below 650. And then finally, one of the other important dating issues is we are looking for a net worth of about equivalent of the loan amount that you're requesting. And then about nine months of liquidity for debt service. Nine months of principal and interest payments? In, correct. And in post-closing liquidity? That is correct. So you talked a little bit about what the borrower needs to bring to the table. What about the actual property? Is there any, you know, five units and above after that requirement? What else are you looking for when you, when you underwrite a property? That's another good question. Each property we, we look at on a very, uh, you know, on a holistic level. So what I will look for is five units or more. We like to see loan amounts that exceed, you know, a million bucks by a couple hundred thousand dollars. It's always rough having a, a loan potentially fall below that million dollar threshold. We are looking for properties that are in somewhat good repair. They don't have to be pristine. If you think about it, historically, Freddie has provided financing for, I always love the A properties, but the B and C properties, um, at the end of the day, we are looking to promote affordability. So some deferred maintenance is, is acceptable. Some capital improvements is acceptable. There's no certain age, so I can finance buildings that are, were built in the 20s or the 40s or, or whatnot. We always like to see historical income and expenses that are consistent. So initially, when we try to size the deal, we're going to ask for at least a, a trailing 12 months of income and expenses. And I, I like to see some sort of consistency on the top line on your income and also consistency in your expenses. I don't like to see those hopping all over the place. One of the other gating issues is we like to see 90% physical occupancy for 90 days. Crime is, is something that we do deal with, but I can finance properties in rougher neighborhoods. I believe th those are probably the, the biggest ones. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, you know, Freddie is pretty new to the small balance game. What are some of the main differences between if someone's trying to consider the Freddie small balance versus maybe taking a Fannie loan? What are some of the unique characteristics that Freddie brings to the table on the small balance side? In my personal opinion, I believe the Freddie product is, is better, but some of the biggest differences you'll see are the prepayment structure. Freddie, when they conceived of this program, they wanted to be very similar to a bank loan. So our prepayment structure as a baseline is a step-down prepay. So think on a five-year fixed rate, 54321. Fannie, even though they advertise it, 90 five percent of the time is going to be yield maintenance so that's one of your biggest differences meaning that it's a really large prepayment penalty and kind of prohibitive to sell it open they have to sell it as like a loan assumption right correct and then on, on top of it as as a borrower that means that it, there's a level of ambiguity you don't know what your prepayment penalty is going to be in year three because you don't entirely know where interest rates are going to be at this point in time Versus on ours, year three, you're, you're a three percent prepayment. So that's one. The second one versus Fannie that we're able to um, really compete on is closing costs, application fees. Because the program is is meant to compete mainly with the banks, the program was conceived to have abbreviated third parties. So we have an abbreviated appraisal, we have an abbreviated engineering report, and phase ones are not standard. They're only recommended if something shows up on the engineering report. With that in mind, what we as a lender, to compete even with other SBL lenders and also with Fannie, what we've done is we've capped our closing costs. So for a very low dollar amount of $62.50, we will provide all of the lender legal and the third party, the standard third party reports. That's great. I mean, I, I like the the capped fees structure of the transaction. Let's talk about some other benefits of the program itself versus Fannie Mae. Sure. One of the other great benefits of the program is the way that we quote the deals. So I'm going to send out a term sheet with a quote on it that's an absolute interest rate. Unlike a Fannie or even a larger balance Freddie deal where you have an index and a spread over that index – Everything is is already combined so that all you see on that one term sheet is that one absolute dot or absolute interest rate. On top of that, what Freddie has allowed us to do as seller servicers is to go to the borrower and say, if we provide all of the necessary documentation to Freddie Mac for their final review within 45 days, they will honor that interest rate on the term sheet. So effectively, you have a free interest rate 
lock for 45 days to provide us with all of the information that's necessary. So you lock it on the front end where that in relationship to Fannie Mae is that that that's locked on the back end. That's correct. That's correct. Again, there's is a level of ambiguity because you don't know until 30 or 45 days into the process with a Fannie loan what your actual interest rate will be versus day one when you sign that application, you know what your interest rate's going to be. It's right there in front of you on that term sheet. Okay. Anything else in terms of, I know you guys have maybe a hybrid option and then also maybe talk about foreign nationals, what what options you have as a Freddie? Sure. So the hybrid option, that, that's actually a, a really... Uh, compelling portion to the program. So Freddie on the small balance platform offers two types of loans. They offer a standard fixed with your five, seven and 10 year, and then a balloon payment at the end. And then they offer what's known as a hybrid term. The hybrid term is the best way to think about that would probably be a single family adjustable rate mortgage where you have a longer term, you have an initial fixed period, and then it floats for the remainder of that term. Backing up, both products, the fixed and the hybrid, are underwritten off a 30-year amortization schedule. The difference with the hybrid over the fixed would be that the hybrid has a 20-year term. So you'll get, whether you choose a 5, 7, or 10-year fixed period, it will float for the remainder of that 20-year term. One of the beauties of this is, effectively, you have a 20-year term, so you don't have to look at potentially refinancing five years out or seven years out or 10 years out. You have optionality. From a hybrid perspective as a borrower, does it cost more? And then are you seeing a lot of borrowers use that option? Do you have, you know, roughly just sort of what you're quoting, what would you say hybrid versus fixed? Sure. So relatively speaking, the hybrid price is within five basis points, give or take to the fixed rate loans. The hybrid, it has the same prepayment structure during the fixed period. And then it has a 1% prepay during the floating period. However, that prepayment penalty, that 1%, can be waived if you sell the property or refinance into another Freddie Mac loan. On top of that, the hybrid product has a uh, 5% lifetime ceiling. So if your initial fixed rate is 4%, you have 20 years, it can never go above 9%. And it doesn't cost any more, or any more additionally at the inception of the loan. So there's not like a 50 basis point origination fee to take that hybrid option. So we do, we are seeing a lot of borrowers that are for many different reasons electing to go with that hybrid option. And I think a lot of it has to do with the optionality that's provided with potentially having a 20 year term and in a market where people don't really know where things will be. When their balloon comes up. Yeah, correct. Okay. All right. Great. What about foreign nationals? Any specifics on on them that you can share with us? On sure. So we we do have deals that we're doing with foreign nationals. I've financed a few. The biggest thing with foreign nationals, obviously, we we like the property to underwrite to the same credentials that it would be with a U.S. citizen. We like the foreign nationals to not have any sort of background issues. And then on top of it, the only additional criteria that we look for is instead of having a net worth equal to the loan amount, we like to have the net worth about two times the loan amount, and then the liquidity about two times the standard liquidity, which effectively is about a year and a half. So instead of nine months, it would be 18 months of liquidity for uh, interest in principal. Okay. In terms, I mean, we really compared and contrast the Fannie versus Freddie. Any other lending sources out there that you see are competing with your product? Yeah, they, I mean, we do compete with with all the other capital possibilities in the marketplace. I'd say the ones that we run into the most would be your local regional banks. In top markets, yeah, they, they offer very compelling options. Uh, biggest thing that separates us usually is going to be the non-recourse, or I don't know if we touched on this, but we do offer interest only. Interest only is one of the other defining features of the SBL program. In a standard or a top market, I can offer three years of I.O. for free on a 10-year fixed rate term. Most banks probably are not providing that level of interest only. We do have the ability to go full-term I.O. In, in throughout the country as well. It would just be a little bit more stringent underwriting to a 65 LTV instead of an 80. And then on top of that, your debt service coverage ratio would be a little bit higher than what would be standard, which is a 120 or a 125, depending on the market. And then on top of that, most banks, some of them don't provide a 10-year fixed. I can provide a 10-year fixed throughout the United States. So those are the biggest features why we, we usually will beat out banks. 
regarding CMBS. CMBS has, has had a, an interesting go at it this year. One of the nicest features about us in particular is that we buy our own BPs. So I never have an issue with a deal potentially getting kicked at the, the 25th hour. I know exactly that the deal will get funded where, where we stated it to be. On top of that, most CMBS is defeasance. Again, we're step down. And then one of the other beauties of the, of the product is that we're annual reporting. Most uh, CMBS is quarterly reporting. We may run into life insurance companies here and there. It's, it's rare, but we have the ability to go to 80%. Most life insurance companies won't go above 65 or 70 depending. With the Freddie program, do you guys allow supplemental financing loans in, in this product? We don't. That is one of the differentiating factors between the Freddie conventional and the Freddie small balance. Even on the conventional side, they, they cap that minimum dollar amount at a million dollars. And if you think about it, if you have a million dollar loan to get another supplemental of a million, you really need to do a, a lot, lot of right, yeah. a lot of either capex or top line revenue growth. So no, the the product, the best way to think about the small balance program is is really just straight down the middle of the fairway. Where even though Freddie does do a handful of of things like supplementals would be one of them, we're just looking for for basically just pretty straight and relatively non complex deals. So right. a few other things. Actually, it's, this brings up a good question. A few other things that wouldn't be great fits for the SBL program would be student housing. That's not what the program was intended for. Freddie will do that in other programs that they offer, but the SBL program is not a great what, fit What's for your that. tenant concentration maximum for the, uh, the small balance program? On students, we can do anything less than 50% of the rent roll can be students right now. But if it's what about military or is that same with military, thing? same with military? Well, that's pretty high. I mean, if you go to the regular Fannie Mae dust program, it's 20 percent concentration. So you still have you own a property in, say, locally in Denton, Texas, that is near a bunch of universities. You should be able to uh, fit most people into into that type yeah. of uh, concentration level. That's correct. But let me step back and say that if you are hitting right at that 50 percent threshold, we're going to scrutinize the deal pretty sure. heavily. So hopefully there's other mitigants that will counteract that 50% concentration of students. Uh, well, maybe you can uh, kind of walk us through how, how does the deal cycle work with, with you guys? What's kind of the process, some key dates, timelines, et cetera, to get from I have a property I want to buy and I start talking to you to we actually fund it at closing? Sure. So once I get the deal from you, we typically like to bring it in and I'll have an analyst look at it. And we like to size it. And then get back to you within 24, 48 hours with some initial feedback. Hey, this deal works well. We need some additional information, whatnot. And then once we get the term sheet out to you and the term sheet signed and the deposit is in, we have what's known as a welcome call or a kickoff call where we're going to take the deal and transition it into our underwriting team. And we staff a closer and an underwriter on the deal, and then as well as the production side, we'll, we'll follow the deal from start to finish. We order all of our third parties on a two-week turnaround. We like to get those in as quick as possible and make sure if there's any issues, we've addressed them. Usually, most borrowers, if it's an acquisition, have a diligence period on their PSA. So within two weeks, typically, if, if there's anything that pops up on the engineering report, which is the most common, we can then address it with the borrower and he can go back and if need be, he can renegotiate with the seller. During that two week time period, we also like to dual track and get all of the documents that we need from the borrower so that by, let's just call it week three, when we have the third parties back, we have all of the information necessary, the, the, the financial statements, the um, borrower structures, everything we need so that I can put that entire package in front of my underwriter, and he has all the information in front of him to put together a final underwriting package submission for Freddie Mac. That usually takes about a week where we're pretty good with once we have a complete package, and I stress complete package, we're able to turn those deals very quickly, get them through the credit officer, submit them to Freddie Mac so that, let's just call it four weeks out, we have a total complete submission package for Freddie Mac. Freddie can, Mac. Can you talk about that submission piece? I mean, a lot of times people are always wondering, you know, it's in approval. What does that mean? How, how do you guys interact with Freddie Mac? That's always something. 
One of the beauties of what we've been doing for the last year and a half, at, especially in my company, is we've been focusing solely on this product. So yes, the, one of the biggest differences between Fannie and Freddie is that Fannie, the originator, underwrites and can fund the loan without actually having to get it reviewed by Fannie. At Freddie, the process is a little different. We put together the underwriting package. We underwrite the deal. And then on top of that, we submit to Freddie and they re-underwrite the deal. With that in mind, I get questions all the time. Well, how do you know what Freddie's going to do on the deal versus how you one of the beauties of focusing on on the Freddie product exclusively has been that we're very in tune with any changes on a daily basis, weekly basis. So we can, with 99% certainty on the front end, when I term sheet the deal, I know it's either going to work or it won't work for that Freddie product. We've never had a deal not get a, an approval from Freddie Mac. If anything, we'll, we'll send it into Freddie and Freddie will come back and say, listen, it's a first time buyer in out of town market. We don't feel comfortable with him self managing this property. We would rather have a third party management in place. That that would be one of the biggest changes that we've seen, but never where they come back at, you know, six weeks later and say, This property was declined. Again, because we are our own BP buyer, we are willing to take that risk and Freddie will look at that and they'll honor that and they'll say, Well, if they're willing to take the risk, then we're on board with it. So Okay, so they might mitigate the the structure, mitigate the risk a little bit with some structure, whether it's third party property management or lower leverage or something along those lines versus just sure, killing I mean, the deal completely. That's correct. But we've never had an issue where they've come back and we've term sheeted at eighty and they said we want you down at sixty five. Okay. I'll be honest, I on the front end I like to make sure that my deals get done exactly how I term sheet them. So if I, I don't think it's a strong deal, I probably will only send you a term sheet for 65 or 70% loan to value. We like to make sure that that everything gets done exactly how we promised it would get done. Okay. No, that's great. I mean, that's a huge win in terms of, you know, certainty of execution for for borrowers. Any unique transactions out there? I know you've been doing this for 18 months. Any unique transactions out there that you can think of that Sure. I have a lot of examples. I I do a lot of unique deals. <laughs> You actually, you had one of them, James. Uh, we were able to do a cardinal housing deal. That's something that's that Freddie has started to do in the past quarter to two quarters. What is cardinal housing? Manufactured housing. Unfortunately, we're not able to do mobile home parks yet, but manufactured housing is something that Freddie has come around to and, and they are willing to do. And that would be a great example of a deal. Another great example, I just funded a deal, a smaller deal in Las Vegas, and that deal did, it was an irrevocable trust where the beneficiary was under the legal age to sign the documents. So there was no warm body guarantor on that deal. That was a great example of a deal that we were able to do with Freddie Mac where there was no warm body guarantor to sign the recourse carve outs. Okay. I had another deal that came in where the engineering report recommended a a decent amount of deferred maintenance be taken care of, CapEx into the property. Typically, I don't love doing deals that have more than 10% of CapEx necessary to, to bring the property up to a state of good repair. We were able to get that one done. How that works is it's it's a hold back on the loan, and it's it's structured very similar to a construction financing where there's a draw as work is completed. And whether that's three months, six months, nine months, it's usually stipulated by us and Freddie. Once all of that work is completed, your loan amount will be the original loan amount quoted on the term sheet. So that's appraised value, you're saying? So Correct. if you're buying a million dollar property, you don't want anything over 100,000? Correct. Okay. okay. Correct. We have done some foreign nationals. We've done, I, I have a property that I financed in uh, Philadelphia where the borrower had a bankruptcy. It was kind of an interesting circumstance, but we were definitely able to get a borrower with a bankruptcy through the process. It was a good property. There were good mitigants on it. I had a good, consistent, stabilized cash flow for many years. He wasn't taking a, a lot of money out of the property. And with all of those in mind, even though he did have a bankruptcy in his background, we were still able to, to successfully get that financed 
where we quoted it. All right. James, just, just you and I kind of chit-chat here because you, you've had a lot of experience with the, of uh, the Freddie Mac program. Tell me, by you, why do you like that program? I like the program, I think, number one we've hit on is when they quote a deal and give you the terms of the loan, they close on it. And then they are very streamlined. So in terms of closing costs, a lot of borrowers in this loan amount range are very focused on especially on a refinance, how much is it going to cost me at the end of the day, right? And am I getting, am I getting any value out of this new loan? So if it's going to cost me forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in legal and third parties, I'm not doing the deal. So on a Freddie deal, if you have a cap cost of $6,000, $7,000, most borrowers are willing to spend the money, get the third parties and get it done. And John's group is very strong in choosing people for each role. So as you go through the process, understanding whether it's insurance or third parties, they have a dedicated person who's an expert in that, and they can get that part of the transaction done and completed so that when Freddie comes back to you with an approval, you're ready to close almost immediately. And so talk, talk to us a little bit about the product itself in terms of it's a 30-year amortized loan. It can be up to a 20-year term with the first, say, five, seven, 10 years being fixed. And then it just rolls over to an adjustable rate for the remaining term. A lot of times when I tell borrowers about the Freddie Small Balance Program, they don't believe it because it's brand new. And so a lot of these investors haven't heard about it. And so when you tell them you have a hybrid option, you have a step-down prepay, it's fixed, it's non-recourse, they, they really don't believe it because the product is that good. And so if your property qualifies, you as the borrower qualifies, and even if you know there might be a few wrinkles on the deal, we've been able to get deals across the finish line. I mean, like John was talking about, I took it to a couple, I spoke to a couple lenders, and they didn't even know that some of the rules within the Freddie Small Balance Loan Program were changing, and that was an option for them. So getting in front of people who are doing a lot of transactions with this product type is key because it is a new product and a lot of the things are changing quarter to quarter. So you have to be on top of these things. Yeah, and John is an exclusive member of the old capital team. Tell us a little bit more, James, a little bit. If you wanted to do this transaction in a smaller town, could you get the same 80% leverage or do they have kind of a step down in leverage too? So Dallas or Austin or San Antonio, I understand the 80%, but if it comes down to smaller towns, what kind of leverage can you get on that? I mean, the transaction that we did, it was probably an hour outside of the closest metro. And so depending on the county and typically the zip code, we're able to look up sort of what market Freddie Mac is going to put that into. So it could be a standard market, it could be a small market, even go down to a very small market. So that will let, limit your amount of leverage. And so if you give us a call, figure out what the address is, what county it's in, then that's going to drive the amount of leverage that you'll be able to put on the transaction. John, is there anything that we have not talked about that you think would be important for people to understand about this product? I think that we have touched on all of the um, all of the the selling features of the product. You know, I, I would like to stress, kind of going back to what you said, we we do have you know, think about it as an assembly line, and everyone specializes in one thing and they do it very well and it's a very fluid process everyone's on the same floor in the same building in the same location so your closers are talking to your underwriters are talking to your analysts and the feedback is great on the front end to the back end to the back to the front so it's a seamless process where people are always learning from other deals that are getting done how that deal got done. And then it will directly come back to me when I'm sizing a deal on the front end. And I know that, oh, hey, that guy got a deal done over here doing that structure. So unlike other lenders where it, the operations could be all over the country, it really works to our advantage having everyone on the same floor in the same building talking to each other every day and, and knowing exactly what's getting done and how it's getting done. A lot of our listeners are either multifamily owners already are potential investors in multifamily. Can you talk about when you're working on a deal, what can a borrower do to really make sure the process goes smooth and make your job easier? That's a great question. The biggest thing would be 
to be responsive, attentive, making sure that the information that you're sending us is the correct information. One of the beauties of our program, which I didn't touch on, but I will, is we don't require tax returns, whether personal or at the entity level. And I understand that to a certain level, tax returns are, they carry a higher level of expenses. That's not always necessarily what you want to show the lender. And then also, you don't really want to be showing the appraiser those those heightened level of expenses. So making sure that the information you send us is accurate and true and reflects how the property is actually operating is one of the biggest things. The second thing is, yeah, just being responsive. We do like to close these deals as quickly as possible. I'm, I'm usually turning them, I'll be honest, anywhere from 45 to 60 days. I have definitely funded deals, though, in 30 days. We can close them as quickly as the borrower can get us the information. But again, it's it's really, it always comes back to the borrower. How accurate is the information? How complete are the packages? And how responsive can you be? If we do have questions, which we will, how quickly can you turn a question for us? So those would be the biggest things that, that we see. Okay, great. Mike, anything more to add to it? Nothing from Mike? John, a funny story in lending at all? You know, I know this is a new new product that's been around for 18 and 24 months, but, uh, you know, you've had a tremendous amount of success. You know, the Freddie Mac program has. I mean, just one of the things that James talked a little bit about was, you know, we underwrite these properties by themselves. It kind of, we don't use the global cash flow analysis by looking at the tax returns. So that's a big help so that, that you know, the regional community lenders always look at property, but they really focus in on the personal tax returns, and you guys don't have the ability to do that. The three years of interest only in some of these top markets, they're able to get the three years interest only is great. If it's a smaller market, you can probably get up to one one year of interest only. Is that a big thing that people are looking for these days is, is the interest only piece? Sure, sure. Interest only is that's one of the key features that we, that we will sell, and, and it'll help us compete with other lenders in those markets. So yeah, that is definitely one of one of our biggest selling points in the program right now. You know, one thing I guess I would stress to your borrowers is that if they think it remotely fits the box to send it to you guys and have me take a look at it. Because again, this is, it's, it's not a cut and dry, either it fits or it doesn't fit. It's, you know, there's, it, there's always some level of negotiation. We like to look at deals on a holistic level. Freddie does as well. So um, maybe if, one element of the deal is outside the box. There's enough that are in the box that we can get it done. And I would rather take a look at that deal and and let you know that as opposed to never see that deal. Oh, that's great. All right, we'll, we'll finish this up. Uh, Mike, thanks for being in the podcast today. James, thanks for being in the podcast. And our special guest, John Darrow, with uh, the specialist with the Freddie Mac Small Balance Loan. Thanks for making it into the podcast. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening to the Old Capital Real Estate Investing Podcast. Please join us at oldcapitallending.com to sign up for our weekly email updates. We'll see you here next week with another great interview. Thank you for listening to the Old Capital Real Estate Investing Podcast.